All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a live, another live broadcast here with SoFlo Soccer. Um, this is my post-game reaction live. I just got home a couple of minutes ago from the Inter Miami versus Monterrey CONCACAF Champions Cup fixture, where the Herons dropped two to one against the Mexican side. Um, a couple things to talk about. I'm not going to make the stream too long. This I'm not going to make the live broadcast too long. But um, there are some just key points that I want to touch on and that we'll go over. And then we'll talk about a little bit about the next leg that's happening next Wednesday. And then we'll talk about the upcoming game, which is this Saturday against the Colorado Rapids. Um, so just overall, before we just dive into anything, dive into the starting lineups and the players and whatnot. Um, I just want to say that off the rip, the game went fine i just realized that i'm not full face there we go i now i'm full face the game went fine um i just can't believe i spoke a whole minute oh my god i can't i, I spoke an entire minute while my ca camera was tiny anyways um so basically to summarize the game in just a couple of in just a minute uh we played fine inter miami played fine for let's just say 60 minutes of the game we played well for the entirety of the first half we i think we played well up until about the 65th minute pretty much until ruiz got the red card and then from there it all went downhill but we easily kind of went up maybe two, at minimum two nothing in the first half um but that will go over as as we go but honestly i don't want people to just think that we we didn't play good we will lost because of Messi because it always seems like a common trend that people will just kind of say that oh yeah Inter Miami didn't win because Messi didn't play because their players suck or whatever or Data or Data didn't manage the team well or whatever this was probably the best game that I think Data has managed under for Inter Miami in a long time at least this season um we played like a 4-3-3 now speaking of that it's a good transition let's let's just look at the starting lineup uh, we'll go to, we'll take it to Twitter. Now we can switch over. Um, we'll switch over to Twitter and we'll check out, uh, the starting lineup that inner Miami posted on social media and their site, which is right here. Let me switch, make sure the window capture is on that. We're doing it live. Everything's live. Okay. So this is the starting lineup that they posted on social media. So they have uh, Drake Callender uh, in goal. Again, obviously taking the captain's armband. Uh, Jordi Alba, Freire, Aviles, and Cello. So pretty much our best starting back four that we can have at, at the defense. Uh, Diego Gomez, Ruiz, and Busquets in the midfield. Pretty much the best midfield that we got, uh, you know, Despite the injury, like minus Redondo, minus Cremashi, I think this this is the best midfield we got um, with uh, all of our other players being out injured. And the top three is Taylor, Suarez, and Gressel. Gressel playing on that right wing once again. So even though here it's a 4-3-3, on the field, like I, when I was at the game, it looked more like a 4, like 4-5-1, if that made sense. So pretty much like, Taylor and Gressel were playing like the left and right uh, mids. Um, they did get uh, high up the field, but it, they pretty much had five midfielders, at least transitioning back on defense. Uh, Busquets kind of played his regular role. I don't know why it says that he played on the right. I don't think he did, at least not that I've noticed. Um, I think him and Ruiz just kind of rotated back and forth, at least for the first half. But yeah, and then Suarez was just kind of playing lone up there um, and kind of make, and making plays with Jordi Alba, who would come down that wing, and Taylor and whatnot. And um, they put a lot of good plays together. But yeah, the Campana on the bench again. Um, Sailor on the bench. Afonso, the academy product, is on the bench. And uh, yeah, so that was the starting 11. Um, it's honestly, it's not even a bad starting 11. That's, pro that's the best starting 11 we have. That's literally the best starting 11 we have minus Messi and minus all the injured players. It It's just, um, yeah, I mean, we didn't play bad. We didn't play bad at all. We didn't play as bad as I think people expected us to play. Um, we did score uh, early in the minute. Let's see if we could, we could probably find the goal here actually, but we scored pretty early on. I think it was in the 19th minute. We scored off the corner kick. Here we get, here it is. 
scored off the corner kick. I was actually, I was like, you can't see it because it's obviously like the ba back quality, but I was sitting alongside here. Yeah, near post, ball straight to Avidus. I think there was a dummy run, I'm not going to lie to you, which I, I think there's a dummy run right here. I don't think it was a dummy run. I think he just missed the ball and it just fell to Aviles. But yeah, Freda missed it. It went to Aviles. I, and that's how that's what we went up. It was a good goal. We don't really, you know, do well on set pieces, especially defending them. But um, we took that early lead. I unfortunately didn't get a, a goal of of the actual shot. But I did get a uh, or I didn't get a picture of the actual like goal. But um, I did get a picture of them celebrating later on. But yeah, Inter Miami's trending on on Twitter. And yeah, so these these are the goals that we'll we'll come we'll come to later. But yeah, pretty much. Um yeah, in that first half we had a we had a bunch of chances. Uh like I wanna say like I said, we could have went two nothing up. There was a moment there was actually a play where uh Robert Taylor did get injured, right? And then Alfonso had to come in for him. And uh there was a play where Alfonso and, and Suarez were doing like one twos and Eventually, the ball, Suarez passed it to Afonso. Afonso was supposed to pass it back to Suarez. I was expecting because I was tracking him on my camera. Afonso never made the pass back. Instead, went for the shot and completely, and completely missed it. So, um, And he got so passionate about it. Suarez got so upset that he didn't pass it back because I think that was a guaranteed goal. I'm not going to lie to you, but yeah, it is what it is. So we definitely, I'm trying to look at the stats here. Uh, We've had in the first half we had six total shots. I guess we both had six total shots, but I think we had more. Um, we were definitely more clinical uh, in the attack. They also could have had like maybe a goal in that first half. Um, they did. They did get up the field quite quite a bit. So it was very very even, and the game was looking really really solid in that first forty five minutes. The younger players like Ruiz was pretty stupid i'm not gonna lie to you so just to kind of put it simply it was very stupid mentally it wasn't he wasn't at his best um he made a lot of silly mistakes i think he let the emotions of the game get the best of him and um it, 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 that's how he got that first yellow card for descent and then eventually in that second half um he made a very very stupid tackle i don't expect that tackle to be on social media anywhere but um it was very, very stupid, very, very stupid. But I mean, hey, you know, like that's that's that kind of shows you that he's still young, that he still has to learn to kind of control his emotions in situations like that, especially against the game in Monterrey where they're already up and they can't afford to just go down. They like they can't afford to go down a player. Um, I feel like that that should have should have known that something like that was going to happen. Maybe take him off. Or I mean, I don't even think they had. I would have just didn't mind Sunderland. He could have brought in Sunderland just to make sure that Ruiz didn't get sent off. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, second half. Don't think like anything. I can't really think of any negatives that happened. In, like the team was getting frustrated. Like that was that was something I was able to notice. Um, as the game progressed. I think everybody started getting frustrated. Suarez was getting more frustrated than usual. Jordi Alba was getting pretty emotional as well. I think Busquets stayed, I think, pretty calm. Obviously, the, the officiating didn't really help the situations within Miami and their frustrations. Um, but it was just a lot of um, a lot of emotions, a lot of mental and mind games that was going on that kind of challenged uh, the Herons to to keep um, to keep their composure. Um, also, um, so yeah, up until I'm trying to let, let's look at that first goal for Monterrey. Oh, that came about that literally came, I believe it was like five minutes after the red card was given. If I could find it. Uh, that's the first game. That's that's the second goal. Oh, this was the oh okay. Before I show that, before I show the before I show the Monterey goal, this was the actual. This was the play. For those who don't remember, this was the play. 
oh, I didn't even realize it was that late in the half, but this was the play that um, Leo Afonso and Suarez connected and should have passed it back to Suarez. So Alba passes it down to Suarez. He plays the pass to Leo. And here, Leo turns and panics. He completely panics because even if he wanted to shoot this, he definitely had time and space here to just either take a touch and take it on the left or play a pass back into Suarez or even cut across. But he completely messed it up. And I don't know, you're going to see the frustration on Suarez. Like, and absolutely yeah and i i would be frustrated like that too either either wait for suarez because suarez is gonna if suarez is gonna find that space if you don't find it um or just take the touch and take it on your left i don't know man or take the touch and bait it cut back suarez is gonna be there very very and like i said it's it's just the youngsters there they don't have the experience maybe they don't have that you know mental that mental yet uh just to think that just to think or make those decisions in those heated moments I'm having a really hard time finding the first Monterrey goal. And it's really annoying. Okay. I, no, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it either. If I type in Monterrey first goal it literally came in like five minutes after ruiz got the red card and then as soon as the red card was given from ruiz um inter miami just looked bad right because like sailor was then substituted in right they switched to a like five back formation and in the midfield it was only i think it was busquets oh, who's in the midfield i think it was Bus. Busquets, Gressel, maybe, and then Gomez. Because I think it should, they switched to like a 5-3-1. So it was like Busquets. Yeah, so it, it would have been Gressel, Busquets, and Gomez. Suarez lone up top. And then it was Cello with Aviles, uh, Sailor Freire, and Alba. So, and then after, when they, when they did, when they switched to that, it was just, it was just game over, honestly, for in Miami. Yeah, for some reason I can't find the first game or the first goal, but that doesn't matter. We'll just skip to the second goal because the second goal comes and it's like in the 88th minute, literally the dying embers of the game. Inter Miami with a one one with a one run draw, Inter Miami could have like that was like a fair that that would be a fair result with a one one draw. But here is the clip. 88th minute, Monterrey is on the attack. A one more draw is fine for into Miami at this point. And then this happens. I think that's... I think it's Aviles. He passes it to Gomez. And Gomez, like, completely loses it. So, Aviles just gives it to Gomez. Gomez completely loses the sight of the ball. Lays it off, and it's a golazo at the end of the day. That's, that's un golazo. Golazo de Monterrey. Golazo de Rodrigo. Unbelievable. So, yeah, no, uh, they fell asleep. I think he was just, Gomez was just tired. I don't know if he was tired, fatigued, just he. Like, how can you let something like that happen in your in your own area, in your own penalty area, to give Monterrey the advantage? It's just, uh, it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable for the, it's not the time, it's not the place for that to happen. Um, so yeah, very, uh, it's 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 such a shame that Inter Miami is to be this way. Uh, people are saying that Messi is now pretty much guaranteed to be playing in the next game uh, next week on Wednesday in the second leg at Mexico. And in all honesty, yeah, like he has to. Like at this point, um, I've always said that we don't, we can't rely on Messi. We can't rely on Messi magic and we can't rely on Messi to score a hat trick to win the game. Like it's, it's something that 
And that kind of is what frustrates me is that people just expect Messi to carry the team. People expect Messi to just come in straight after an injury and just perform out of his mind and just score and, and carry Inter Miami to glory. And that's just not how that works. People need to start to want Inter Miami to play like a team and not have to rely on Messi to score goals for them and win them games. Um, people need to be appreciative more for Suarez and Alba, um, Suarez and, or Sergio uh, Sergio Busquets and Alba. Busquets is literally the core of the midfield. Like he's literally the pendulum. Like he literally t- dictates that tempo in our midfield. Without Sergio, there is no midfield. Alba is a threat on that left flank. He that is his. He owns it. He belongs to it. Like there are there are pieces in the puzzle. Frey, Frey is a good center back. We have Cello that's great on the right. Gressel is great. Um, we have a lot of Robert Taylor's great. Suarez is great. Like we have great players that can play together. They play well together. And um we're gonna need something. We're gonna need them to 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 step it up in that second leg because going into the second leg at, at Monterrey, like at Mexico, it's going to be very challenging mentally, especially for the younger players, because we do have a rather young squad, despite of what people say. Uh, I think our squad average is like 26 or something. Um, or like the average age is like 26 or whatever. And uh, it's a fairly young squad. We have a lot of youngsters that start, like Freire, like Aviles, like Cello, uh, like Ruiz. Um, so it's mentally well Ruiz is not going to be there now but you know what I mean so mentally they're going to have to be 100% they can't let the Mexican fans um get in their heads uh t- tonight the Mexican fans were at, were out of control I mean it was just a, an absolute mess they were loud they were drunk they were going crazy they were at at the second half I switched over to Miami's to where La Tribuna is um where like all the supporters are right uh, for Inter Miami, and they were chanting and singing, whatever. But across the way, like, are, is the away stand? The Mex- all the all the Monterrey fans are on that that one corner. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. And they were a lot louder, and I and they were across the field. They were so much louder than the Inter Miami fans behind me, and um, that's a problem. That was a real, real problem. There was nobody at the stadium as well. Pretty much half the stadium was. I think there was seventeen thousand people. At that stadium, which doesn't, which sounds like a lot, but honestly, in that stadium, it's not. And uh, it wasn't, it wasn't at full capacity. It wasn't even close at full capacity. The away section, the away section was packed. The the section uh, where like the the benches are located, that was half empty. Um, yeah, no. So I get that. I get the tickets were expensive. People probably didn't want to go to the game, but um, that just kind of it just shows that that was also really missing um, at that game. So yeah, there was a lot of a lot of things that outside of play, outside of the actual game, that took into effect. And uh, hopefully, we can improve on that for the next for the next game. Um, okay, I got to wrap this up because we are at twenty minutes, and everybody wants to go to sleep. So. Uh, we'll close off on the next game. We have a back-to-back home games. This Saturday, we're playing against Colorado Rapids in the MLS regular season. Um, honestly, Me- Messi's not... There's I highly doubt Messi's actually going to be playing that game. The Colorado Rapids, um, they play in the Western Conference. Um, they are currently 7th place, 6 games played, uh, 2 goals, 2... Two two wins, two draws, two losses, eight points. Um, it's honestly not bad so far. I don't know too much about them, uh, so I'm gonna have to do some research. But pretty much, they beat the uh, LAFC, they beat the Seattle Sounders, and they beat Na- and they tied against Nashville in the last five games. So it's honestly, it's not gonna be a walk in the park. Um, I don't know if we're gonna have. We should have our full starting eleven ready. I don't know if we're gonna. Don't know if 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 we are. We're probably going to have to rotate the squad quite a bit, um, because three games in the span of a week is a lot. It's a lot to to take for the players. So I'm expecting a huge rotation. Um, honestly, I don't know if we're going to walk away with the win. I'm going to be completely honest here. I think if we can steal a point, 
if we could see Laporte, I think that's a huge positive. We we can't afford to to just lose again, um, especially not like against uh, the Red Bulls where we lost four nothing. So we we're, we can't afford to to lose. I think if we could see Laporte, I think that'd be a huge huge takeaway uh, from that game. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see what happens uh, next week, April tenth is the second leg versus Monterrey at Mexico. That's going to be a very, very challenging game. It's going to be difficult. So the away group, uh, so since Inter-Miami lost what uh, two to one, and so Monterrey has two away goals, so pretty much their goals count as double, right? So we're going to have to win. If Inter-Miami were to go through to the next round, they have to win by two goals. So they would have to win pretty much um, either two nothing or three one. Or something like that. Or if they tie and they do 2-1, that can go into extra time. But um, they can't afford to... You can, Inter-Miami can't afford to concede more than one goal uh, against Monterrey in the second leg. So we're going to see. We're going to have to score a lot of goals. We'll see what happens. Uh, thank you so much for tuning into this live broadcast. Uh, I try to uh, try to keep it as short as possible. I know it's kind of all over the place with notes and with uh, thoughts and analysis, but... Like I said, I just got home. Um, the game just happened. And uh, honestly, there wasn't a lot too many negatives in terms of how we played. It was just that last 30 minutes killed us with that red card. And hopefully mentally, the players can come back stronger. Saturday, we're going to look for a draw at the minimum. And then we'll see what happens next Wednesday. We'll see if Messi plays. Uh, he was at the stands today. I saw him. I took like a, I tried to take a picture of him. Um, he was at the stands. He was supporting. So... Let's see. Hopefully, he'll be fit because this this competition is going. It means a lot to the club. So let's see if it means a lot to Messi. I know he wants to rest and wait until for Copa America and be ready and fit for Argentina. But um, I mean, he can't be benched forever. I mean, like he can't be injured until the Copa America. That's like that's a very suspicious. If he if he just decides not to play into the Copa America, very very suspicious as that happens. So let's hope that that doesn't happen. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and tuning into the live broadcast uh, post game Inter Miami versus CF Monterrey in the Concacaf Champions Cup first leg of the round of 16. I'll see you guys on Saturday when we do this again uh, after the Colorado Rapids game in the MLS.